It gives me great pleasure to leave the first dislike on this video because of Coach Mills's loud intro. What's up everybody, Depressed Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Valorant video. And in this video, we're gonna be breaking down, uh, <laughs> If any of your eardrums are like literally fucking bleeding right now, you all gotta blame Batman in the comments down below. But moving on, we need to talk about some hard truths about a perfect team composition, getting cheesed by shotguns, the fact that Smurfs don't really exist, and that you're caring with no kills. We got a lot to talk about, so let's just jump right into it. Now the first big hard truth that you need to understand is that high kills doesn't always mean you're carrying and low kills does not mean you're always throwing. The first thing that you need to understand is that going from the bottom of the leaderboard to the top can happen in a single freaking round sometimes. You could have one insane like freaking eco round where the enemies are rocking pistols, you know, frag out four people and all of a sudden it looks like, oh, you're so great even though the majority of the time you're not doing your fucking job at all. On top of that, roles matter immensely. A duelist is gonna naturally get more kills because they're gonna be the ones with the ability to take duels, while someone like a Sentinel is a lot more about stalling the point and it's not really gonna be that important for you to just frag out every single game. Now, the most important thing you need to understand is that not every kill is the same as far as difficulty level. If you're in held space on defense and enemies have to come to the point and flush you out, getting a kill is far easier than you going on to point and taking that space yourself. For instance, if you're a jet and nothing smoked off and you're on point, there's like four or five different angles that an enemy could be in, and if you die, you get information for the rest of your team about where they were, but it's gonna be really hard for you to get kills and still take that space at the same time. On top of that, getting a refrag is way easier than trying to get a retake kill, trying to retake sites. So if you're playing somewhere on defense, over and over again, and your teammates keep dying on another site, you could be put in a retake scenario over and over again, and those kills are gonna be so much damn harder, so your teammate that is getting rushed down and getting like a couple of kills or one kill before they die, and then you're in a retake scenario, it looks like they're really popping off with the high kills, when they're actually freaking throwing, not leaving sites every single time they get rushed down, not stalling at all, even though the scoreboard doesn't reflect that. Now the next thing that you hear all the freaking time in ranked is our team composition is trash. The idea that you need that perfect Sova into Omen into Viper, Sage, having the exact perfect team composition so you have every single role perfectly filled or you only are playing the perfect meta composition. This happens in like every single game where people really kind of see the game in one way. They want the exact composition that won them their last game so that they keep winning, right? Here's the thing, especially if you are not in the highest of ranks, specifically Diamond, Immortal, and Radiant, your team composition doesn't matter all that much because people are not playing them correctly. If the smokes are not going out correctly, if people are not taking sight like they should be, if a duelist is not engaging, then it doesn't really matter that they're playing the role in a composition if it's not being played the proper way. Like a controller, yeah, you could have it on your team, someone could fill the controller, but if they're not smoking correctly, then does it actually fucking matter? No, absolutely not. It doesn't matter. In fact, it would be better that they're on anything freaking else. This is not to say that you should never craft a composition, because you certainly should. It's gonna make your engagements easier, it's gonna help your understanding of the game, and it's gonna be good practice to play proper compositions, and it's probably gonna be more fun overall, but just having a good composition doesn't matter that much unless every single piece is doing their job correctly, which is not gonna happen that much in ranked, if I'm being honest. On top of that, you have definitely had a great composition, gone up against five duelists, and then y'all have just gotten rolled. I know that that has happened to you. And it happens because the composition or the thing that the composition can do that the duelists cannot do, y'all are not taking advantage of, and it doesn't even really matter all that much. But you know what does matter? Your Gamely Premium sub. So go check out the Gamely website right now for tons of in-depth tips and tricks, but let's get back into the video. Now, the next thing that people say all the freaking time, they say, I got cheesed out. Why are they using no skill weapons? I just died to a shotgun. I just died to an Ares or an Odin. Well, here's the thing, and this is gonna be pretty brutal for some of you. There's something called the litmus test, and these guns, especially the way that they're often used in the low rank, like using an Ares just in any freaking situation or an Odin as your primary gun or using a shotgun all the time, if you're dying to these weapons over and over again, then you are failing the litmus test. 
Well, I have talked about in the past that the Odin could be a legitimate contender when used to wall bang and take point and sight, especially with that recent buff to it just being able to wall bang certain Radiantite boxes easier. The Odin is not being used like that in a lot of different games. A lot of games, especially if you're talking about the lowest three ranks, people are just wide swinging crouching ADSing with the Odin and you're dying to it even if you have a Phantom or a Vandal. Now here's the hard truth that no one is going to tell you because they're going to freaking coddle you but you know what I'm going to tell you the truth and the truth is this is a litmus test. The litmus test is freaking headshotting them with your rifle. That is the litmus test. Yes it's difficult. Yes it's not the easiest thing in the world and yeah the enemy is swinging out they're crouching and they're spraying but if you hit them right in the head they are going to die before they kill you and that is why these guns are not very very viable as you climb the skill level of players because they do not fall for that litmus test as often sure if the enemy is low or if they get caught off by surprise but there's a pretty sizable percentage of the time where that Odin is gonna swing around gonna crouch gonna start spraying and is just gonna get dinked right off the bat and that's something that you need to practice practicing flicking to that head practicing punishing that person understand that if you're really struggling with this this is something that you have to overcome if you want to improve and climb and the same thing is true with the shotgun ability discipline checking your corners with intent making sure to play around a potential shotgun in a certain cubby and these are things that are very important to do and this is also why having a shotgun and cheesing with a shotgun is not something that's very consistent the higher you climb now the next big thing that we got to talk about and it's people complaining about the smurfing problem i ran into seven smurfs i played seven games and every single game had a freaking smurf well here's the thing there are not as many smurfs as you think there are yes i know the smurfing problem is here and definitely riot should take steps to fix it but you are not getting a smurf in every single one of your games or at the very least not a freaking radiant smurf on the enemy team there are three big things that you need to understand first off just like shroud says there's a giant amount of rng in the game and what i mean by that is sometimes people just play inceptionally well and sometimes people just play inceptionally bad that means that smurfs can lose sometimes and that just random people can just play a lot better than they normally are that is 100 percent true the second thing that you need to understand is that there's going to be a giant percentage of the time where you also have smurfs on your team and you don't even realize it because getting rolled by a smurf is something you remember a lot more than getting a free win with the smurf 100 percent but I think the most important thing that you need to understand is that if someone is smurfing up against you, odds are they are not Radiance or even Immortal. Odds are they are just a little bit above the rank that you are currently at. This is something that happens a lot where people just smurf in some account that is just a little bit under them or a rank or two at the max because they want to feel a little good about themselves and they want to take the stress off or play with friends. This does not mean that you're going up against tens on a daily basis consistently. That is not the case and here's the true hard truth that a lot of people aren't gonna like but it's the truth i'm gonna be honest every single player who has climbed from the low rank to immortal to radiant has had to not only go up against a fair amount of smurfs but some percentage of the time they've had to beat smurfs i know profound concept but that is the truth that's the reality of rank they're not going anywhere they're not disappearing and people have climbed which means that they have overcome and adapted and won anyways now the last hard truth that I hear very often is people saying I can't climb because my monitor sucks, my mouse is bad, my keyboard, I don't have a gaming chair, the lift goes on and on and on. And yeah, I always preach on this channel that you need the proper tools. You don't want to be trying to hit a home run with a fucking wiffle ball bat. That being said, a lot of these things are really not going to make or break the player at all. Now we'll say there's a point when you have like so bad internet and such a bad monitor and you're getting like 10 FPS and you have a freaking mouse that looks like the size of Texas and... Your keyboard has like three keys on it and they're all broken. I don't know, whatever the case may be. There is a point where, yeah, you need to probably fix your setup. But the majority of the time, you have tons of places that you can improve, setup or no setup. Getting that god tier setup is not going to just make you a god tier gamer overnight. And I see this all the time where people save up really hard. They're like, yeah, I'm, I'm really just at a huge disadvantage here. So they save up and they get like a 360 hertz monitor and a freaking like amazing mouse, amazing keyboard, and they don't change in rank. <laughs> this happens all the freaking time. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. I'm just saying don't conflate the two things. Skill and having great equipment is not the same thing. In fact, it's happened many times in the past, like in a game like Overwatch, there's someone that 
got to top 500 on hit scan with freaking like a 60 hertz laptop it it is definitely possible and it's not going to make or break you so that's just something that you really need to understand but go to the game website for more in-depth tips and tricks and more hard truths definitely let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the comments down below i love your goddamn faces y'all